Back at it with the hot dogs. It's been so long, but it is worth the wait, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you why, because as you can tell right now, I am here with the one and only Sammy Ruiz. How are you doing today, brother? Good, brother. Thank you so much dude, for having me, dude. I'm, I'm, thank you for being here, dog. I'm so excited. Okay, so y'all know him. You see him at Spook Show. You see him at Midsummer Scream. Were you vending at Halloween 40 or no? Yeah, I was at Halloween yeah, 40. Yeah, Halloween 40. Yeah. Everything. You've seen him. You've seen him live in action doing his music and everything like that. It's, it's amazing. Um, we're going to get to the music part later, but let's talk about this amazing artwork right now. As we're speaking, I'm going to have a little slideshow of your art going through. Cool. So that way everyone can know and see everything. You, and Sammy, where, how did all this start? How did the whole art, artistic side of you come out? With art, um, well, I've been, I've been drawing all my life, dude. My mom would draw dinosaurs with me. and uh, Then I was going to school for art. I was going to school for like, graphic design. Then I was taking painting classes. But at that time, I was doing a lot of school project type of paintings. Mm -hmm. Like ge weird geometric stuff. But on the side, I would paint... Uh, or draw little characters, these little creepy characters, and um, I'd show my instructors, and they were like, "Yeah, cool. That's keep doing that. You know, that kind of that's kind of seems like you." So ever since, yeah, I just kind of kept doing it, and got you know offers to do art shows at little bars, and little by little, just met people, oh, yeah, dude. and started kind of working my way up to like the midsummer screens and the all like the, like the community and the Halloween community. Yeah. Awesome. Do you feel like you like this is like your home? Like it's like, yo, I finally found a place that understands your art a lot better. Oh yeah. Because like I've seen a lot of people talk about your stuff like on Instagram, everything like that. When I was telling people like on the low key that I was having you come on, they're like, oh hell yeah, dude! Like I love his his drawings and stuff like that. And um, you know, so you do you finally feel like all right, you know, this is my I guess you can say audience. This is your this is your scene type of thing. Right? Oh yeah, big time, dude. I think yeah. before I started doing these shows, yeah, I was I mean I was already going to a lot of these events. I'd go to oh, Monster okay. Palooza every year, and I would I'd look up to a lot of these vendors like, man, you guys are cool. Like I wish I can do these kind of shows. Yeah. So I mean, being a part of it now, it's like, man, this, this it feels like family. Like this is where I belong. This is my niche, and it's super awesome. That's right. That's how everything should be, man. You know, yeah. It's a small community. We're all here to support each other. All yep. that good stuff. Exactly. That's amazing, dude. So um, one thing, I'm pretty sure I've asked you about this at Spook Show, mm -hmm. but the one thing that always like brings me back to looking at your artwork is those eyes. Those like, the yeah. eyes that on all these characters. It's a weird, like when I say weird, I mean in a good way. It's like a weird Tim Burton, but then again, it's like these things pierce inside of your soul type of thing. It's yeah. in a good way, though. You know what I mean? Um was that like something done on accident and you're like, oh, hey, that worked out? Or did you plan on like, I want something where it looks like the painting's looking right back at you? Like, how, how, how did that kind of turn about? Yeah, I think it was one of, uh, one of two things or two mm -hmm. things. It was uh, one, when I was going to school for art, we would focus in on features like mm -hmm. hands, eyes, noses. But I was really intrigued with eyes. Because okay. it's, a, it's a look into the soul, as they oh, say. Exactly, yeah. So I thought that I was kind of intrigued by that. But also, of course, Tim Burton. Tim Burton does the big eyes. Yeah. And I've always liked the way that looks. It looked kind of like uh, <clears throat> like awkward, like they're stunned. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's, that's some amazing stuff. And you do like a lot of like kind of like parodies and stuff like that. I've seen your thing with It. I've yeah. also seen your little zoot suit of uh, Oogie Boogie. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, that one's so awesome right there. Um, and then what else have you done? You've done like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, and Alice in Wonderland. Which that one, the way the eyes look kind of fits like the original storyline. Because like, you know, she was like an like. Like a crazy person almost like you know she's yeah. like an insane <clears throat> person and everything like that so they were tripping they were tripping yeah, exactly right <laughs> uh, that is like that was amazing how disney can get away with that yeah like with alice in wonderland it's like this is a story about a woman who's like or a little girl who's who's like hallucinating hard on some medication and stuff like yeah that, you know yeah. And disney was just all like well just put a cute bunny on there and we'll we'll sell millions of copies of this you know what i mean yeah that's crazy <clears throat> yeah the origin of it was pretty dark yeah. But, no, yeah, I do like the mashups. I like doing the, uh, like, I, I have my version of Charlie Brown. And, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, where, where I grew up, like, in Northeast L.A., we mm -hmm. see a lot of, like, the, the Cholo guys and stuff. So yeah. I put that some of that attire on Charlie Brown with the Charlie Brown t-shirt. They're called mm -hmm. Cascade shirts mm -hmm. with the fedoras. I got to throw in the fedoras and stuff. Hell, yeah, dude. Hell, yeah, that's amazing right there. And growing up in East LA and everything like that, you, you, were, you were pretty, there's a lot of good, like, street artists out there, and, like, graffiti and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You ever like partaked in that? Like you, you a tagger? <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> no, actually, I was never. I, I mean, I've always admired graffiti. Uh -huh. yeah, a lot of my buddies were into that and stuff. Yeah. But I, I look at. I was never. I never did it myself. But I would. Uh, I was really inspired by the colors they use, and I think that kind of that, those colors kind of inspire what I do now. Because I never liked using colors in the beginning. It was always black and white. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, just kind of seeing that, and there's a bunch of really cool murals up in Highland Park where Ryan Fum or Eagle Rock. Okay. Super nice. nice murals that really inspire me. 
Yeah, dude. I, I see them every time I drive around and stuff like that. It's really, it's really nice and stuff. Yeah. What was like the very first like art piece? Like if you can remember that you're like, you know what? This is gonna be like on the first set of like your first booth and everything like that. Like what was like the first art piece that you remember selling? I'm, I'm guessing I'm asking. Oh man, I think yeah, actually I kind of do remember. I did a yeah. show over at some spot called uh, Mel's Bar. Okay. One of my buddies, he he's his or his art company is called Ninoska um, Art. Mm -hmm. His name is Hannibal. But he, anyways, he allowed me to do the show, and I think I had literally three drawings on my table. Like I just bought a table. I never really done an art show before, like yeah. vended like that before at least. But I had um, a Mickey Mouse that was kind of a steampunk little twist. Then I had okay. a Donald Duck, which was kind of like a sailor. He's holding a bottle of whiskey. Oh, that's right. And I think I had a Betty Boop as well. Okay, kind of nice. like a punk rock looking Betty Boop. But yeah, it was just those three, and that's kind of what kicked me off. People seem to like them, so I'm like, cool, I gotta keep doing more of that. That's amazing right there, dude. That's yeah. amazing. You've just been going on full speed ever since, right? Yeah. Now, what year was this? Like, if you can you remember, like, how long ago? I think this has to be about five years ago, because I think it's been about five years since I really started pushing this style mm -hmm. of art. Okay. Good man, you yeah. been hustling it. You work. You um. You also do music on the side and everything music, like yeah. that. You know, um, you got a family if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I have a daughter. You yeah, have a daughter, dude. That's that's an amazing thing. You're constantly hustling, dude. That's 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 awesome right there, dude. I always appreciate that type of stuff. Let's get into the music now. Yeah. So you're talking about like doing a Donald Duck, like all punk rock. Is punk rock kind of like the music you grew up on? Yeah, my my mom and dad. <clears throat> well, my dad was into thrash. He was into old punk rock. So when I was younger, he'd give me like exploited records and yeah. Subhumans, Discharge. Then my mom was more into like dark wave, like The Cure, Joy Division. Really. So that yes. kind of music really inspired me. Then I was also kind of inspired by old country music from like the forties and fifties. Okay, so like that feel like Willie Nelson. And yeah. Like Johnny Cash stuff. Oh, like Johnny that. Cash, Hank Williams. Yeah. Um, my grandpa's from Kentucky, so he. Oh really? Showed nice. me a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah. Then I got into like different things too, like Tom Waits. I love Tom Waits. Mm -hmm. Super inspired by him. But I think yeah, it's it's a combination of like old Americana music, like old blues, like Helen Wolf. Oh, dude, I love Helen. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. The little punk rock kind of attitude. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's, that's amazing right there. Helen, well, that dude has, like, such an iconic voice. And it's all because of just smoking constantly. Yeah. If you think about it, like, he didn't, like, do, like, any vocal coaching or anything like that. He just didn't put down the cigarettes. Yeah. And, you know, he just sings about how much he loves his coffee in the morning and tea at night and stuff like <laughs> that. Oh, man. Helen Wolf is... By far, like it's crazy because this is like stuff. This is considered folk music in some people's category. Oh yeah, but yeah, yet, it's still playing. Like you still see records of him, and they're going like you know, not top dollar, but still pretty pricey. Then like, yeah, you know, with, some rare stuff. Think, yeah, it's really good, really good stuff right there. Um, you being a musician yourself, uh, how did that all start? Like was that just in the middle of everything with all the art, or did you like decide like at another point that you wanted to start doing music too? Yeah, well, with music, I started playing. I, well, the first in instrument I started playing was uh, drums. Mm -hmm. I got drums. I just wanted to start playing drums because it was you let out your aggression, and oh, I was yeah, kind good. of an angry kid. <laughs> yeah. And um, but yeah, I started playing drums in a punk band for a few years. I probably was about fourteen, maybe okay. yeah, about fourteen, fifteen. Then I had uh, picked up a guitar because I got a guitar for Christmas from my grandpa, and uh, yeah, I, did, I fell in love, dude. I kind of taught myself how to play. I'd throw on old punk like the Ramones, even AC/DC. I kind of learned to start playing too, old heavy metal. Then ever since I met the guys that I play with now, um, and we kind of we discovered what rockabilly music was. Mm -hmm. We we never heard anything like that, so we started playing that kind of style. But it also kind of changed as well. So we got into punk rock, some ska. There we go. So we, it's a big fusion of things that we, we kind of do. Oh yeah, dude. So like a nice little mixture of everything and everything like that. That's, that's yeah. It's just a big old mashup of everything. Yeah. Um, by far, like. You've gone on tour or anything like that? Or? Yeah, we've done uh, little tours. So we've been I, um, all the way up north up to Washington, um, over towards like Arizona, Nevada. Yeah. Nice. So it's cool. Like, like uh, what was it like uh, Psycho Vegas or Vegas Psycho or what's, it, what's that festival called? Yo, oh, yeah. Um, I know what you're talking about. That's yeah. uh, kind of like the equivalent of punk rock bowling kind of. Yeah. The one they have out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you done that one yet? or? That one we haven't. Well, we would play in Vegas a lot. Like uh -huh. when they, they'd have... Uh, that Rockabilly Weekender, what's it called, uh, Viva Las Vegas. Okay. We wouldn't play at that. That's the one, okay. Yeah. I was thinking of that, my bad. Yeah. But during that weekend, we would play at different bars up there and stuff, so. Okay, nice, dude. Any, like, so, like, by far, any crazy stories from on the road? Like, you know, Motley Crue trash up hotels and stuff like <laughs> that, you know, anything like that? Yeah, we, we, we did get pretty crazy. <laughs> I think the, the craziest shows were always in Vegas. Of course, yeah. It's like the place to be. Yeah. You be crazy. A lot of Motley Crue type stuff out there. Hell yeah. Um, Staying up to the wee hours of the morning. 
But there was, I mean, a lot, there was actually this one event that we were playing in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And I think that same night after we played, we drove back to LA because we had to be back the next day for some reason. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was crazy, dude. We were driving on the 10, I believe it is, that takes you all the way to Arizona. Yeah. But yeah, we were all a little tired, but I remember clear, we were all awake because three of us in the band. Mm-hmm. And uh, something huge, dude, swooped across the, uh, the front windshield. Oh, shit. I mean, it looked like a body-sized thing. We had no idea what it was. Maybe it was a huge bat. I don't know, but that was probably oh, a crazy thing that stuck out to me. Something paranormal. Yo, there's, there's like a lot of alien sightings yeah. out there, man. So you could have saw an alien, man. Yeah, it was pure desert, dude. So it's pitch black. You can see the stars real nice. Oh, okay, that's good. Though. Yeah, <laughs> shoot, like if you're gonna die, at least you want to see the Big Dipper first. You yep. know what I mean? That's that's terrifying. All right. So do you believe in aliens or anything like that, man? You know what? I I, I want to say yes. There has to be. I'm I'm really in. Uh, I'm really into like astronomy and stuff and mm-hmm. learning about all this crazy stuff but uh, but as big as the universe is there has to be I think has to be yeah, yeah. Well, man, it's, it's kind of hard not to believe it and then we were talking before the camera was on about that um, Bob Lance or no oh, Bob Lazar yeah. Bob Lazar okay. yeah. Bob Lance um, <laughs> 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 it's this heat man the California weather right now it's, it's yeah. hot as hell but um, we're trying to survive <laughs> it um, Bob Lazar that dude, his story is crazy. We saw that, me and my lady saw that documentary on Netflix, and it's it was just insane. Like, the whole intro seemed kind of crazy. Like, I feel like I've seen those, like, that type of intro, like, on, this, like, on the same type of trailers for, like, a extreme haunt and stuff like that. So I had yeah. no idea what I was watching. I was like, dude, what's going to go on? Like, yeah. is the CIA going to come knocking on my door for watching it? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, oh, dude, it was scary, but... um. That's funny, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy stuff, man. And I'm sure a lot of my buddies think I'm freaking nuts because I'm every time I learn something about this paranormal. Or the, yeah, you have you know, to tell someone. You're yeah. trying to wake people yeah. up. You know what I mean? I'm like, guys, they're, they're, yeah, there's aliens out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my lady hates it. It's that and ghost. Like every yeah. single time, it's like, oh, did you hear about this place? You know this and that. And um, it's like she she gets freaked out because like any after I hear about this, it's like after you hear about ghost stuff. You start picking up on any little thing at your house. You're like, wait, what was that? Yeah. yeah. That's just the cat. No, it's not. It could be the cat. It could be some like paranormal activity and stuff. Yeah. It's for myself coming from a uh, Hispanic family. We're definitely. Oh, you guys you like. Know, we got those like, beliefs, those supernatural beliefs. Yeah. So. Um, so you guys like kind of dabbled in like, uh, what's it? What's it called? Not Santa Marte, but uh, Santeria or something like that? Well, I, 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 I don't want to put them on the spot, but certain oh, family no. members, they. Uh, they uh, dabble in the white magic and stuff. But oh, that's nice. It's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's no. crazy stuff. But I've, I've, I've uh, <clears> talked to a few uh, uh, white witches, I guess you can call them, uh, and nicest people ever, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, um, some of them watch this, so thank you for supporting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and wishes uh, well. I know, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, um, it's really interesting, though, like all that stuff. And you got to think about it, too. Like This is all like ancient stuff, too. Yeah, it's you know crazy, I mean? man. Like, yeah. This is like way before... Catholicism was even a thing if you think about it because like at least from what they're talking about you know um, it's like it makes it like I don't know it just makes it kind of thing it's like yo what was going on before all this you know what I mean yeah you gotta think of ancient Egypt and all this with that stuff exactly. they believed in but uh, but dude that's literally what I do I'm all, all day dude I look at these videos on YouTube on this weird you know ancient yeah. Egypt stuff and do you ever feel like you're being flagged like by like, like Google's flagging you down. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, we gotta keep an eye on this it's guy. You know CIA I mean? is definitely looking out. <laughs> I had a coworker that looked up everything about like conspiracy theories, and he would come to work the next day and just wanted to say, like, "Yo, oh, Justin, did you hear about like Antifa doing this oh, and that?" Yeah. And like, I was just like, "Yo, you need to stop telling me this, you know, because we yeah. got our phones on us. They might be recording. They're gonna associate me with you. I don't want to <laughs> get taken down with you, dog. You know." That's crazy. Little nice old man. Um, but yeah, no, like, so have you had like any ghost experiences? Yeah, I yeah. was at her house, dude. <clears throat> there was. Do you want to share about it? Yeah, actually, one of the most recent things that had happened, dude. I mean, when when it had happened, I kind of I looked at the most logical things that could explain that event, and yeah. I'll explain it right now. But yeah, I kind of looked in my closet. But anyways, <clears throat> my sister and I, we kind of we sh- our rooms border each other. Yeah. But we have these closets that are kind of uh, it's like an aluminum kind of material. So if you were to knock on them, it's pretty loud. Oh, okay. So at night. Um, I sleep pretty heavy, so my sister, she's like, hey, the next morning, she's like, hey, did you hear the knocking on the closet? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no. I'm like, I didn't hear nothing. So she kept telling me that, but this one specific night, I was awake. I was clearly awake. I wasn't half asleep, and I heard that knocking. So I went to my sister's room, and I thought she was knocking on the door, maybe with her foot or something. I thought she was messing with me. So I look at her in her room, and she's dead asleep. I'm like, damn, okay, I just heard that shit. You know, I don't yeah. know what it was. So I laid back down in my bed, and I heard it again. 
It was clear knocking, dude. Like someone intentionally is, was knocking in my closet. So I turned on the light, looked at my closet. Did anything fall? There was nothing on the floor. Mm-hmm. And that was, yeah, I think probably the most recent event, dude. And it still happens from time to time. And I was telling people on my social media that if, if it happens, and I'm going to record it next time it happens. Right. <laughs> Just can, to, can you remember... I can interrupt. Do you know how many knocks it was in a row? There, there was, yeah. I remember one time there was three, oh, okay. and, and then another time there was maybe two or one. Do you know the, the symbolism behind three knocks? Yeah, times? the Holy Trinity that it's mocking. Yeah. Oh, That's what creeped me out about that. Yeah. It's like your, like, uh, whoever you lived with, like your parents or uh, grandparents that, like, bless the house the next day. Like, have you told them about it or no? Yeah. Um, yeah. We brought a priest over to the house to bless it mm-hmm. um, just to get some of that negative energy out. But I think, yeah, I mean... There, there might be something in there, or there has to be. Do you believe in like cleansing your own, like, like well, sort of like, cause I see people they buy sage, yeah, and they burn it themselves, and they have like the little chant, like the prayers and stuff like that. Uh, mostly use Saint Benedict's prayer, like from what I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but um, at least that's how um, one of my friends she does that. She uses Saint Benedict's prayer, burns sage, just goes to every corner of the house, like really like kind of like, like scales the house and stuff like that with it, and um. It's, I shouldn't say house, it's her apartment and stuff like that. And yeah. She says it works, but like, do you guys like prefer to use a priest or have you done it yourself and noticed like, any difference? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we brought the priest over. He did the cleanse and all the blood. Uh-huh. Yeah, coming from a Hispanic family, my mom has done the sage on me. If yeah. Any of my Hispanic uh, people what? know, they, they got the, she got the egg. And I was going to ask about head. that. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> so. I found out like probably like a few months ago that like, my grandma did the same thing to me and my brother when, yeah. my, when my parents took us home, brought us home from the hospital, mm-hmm. um, the egg, and then put it underneath the bed and everything like that, or the yeah. crib. I don't even know what that means. They even, like, I asked my dad, like, what does that mean? He's like, oh, and I was like, why would you let her do it then? Yeah. Like, there you go. She knew yeah. what she was doing, I guess. I was like, I guess. Like, do you know what that means? Like, what, do you, what does the egg mean? It's supposed, I, from what I understand, you're supposed to rub it on the person, yeah. and whatever bad energy is in there, the egg's going to attract that, then you crack it open into a cup. Oh, it's a cup. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes I don't know. They're like, for example, in that movie that came out, Light Ona. I haven't seen that. Oh, movie. you haven't seen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in that movie, they kind of do something. They get the egg, and he cracks it, and it's all black. The oh, egg's all black. Shit. So That's crazy. It's cool that they threw that into that movie. A little mm-hmm. like nice tradition. Or yeah, like exactly. That. So it's called uh, Olympia. Olympia. Yeah. Olympia. Yeah. What they do with the egg. Yeah. Okay. And when they crack the egg, whatever vessel or cup or plate, if there's blemishes in the egg, then they trap whatever evil energy or Spirit or denomination been possessing. So it's like a yeah. it's like a dream catcher almost like you know like it captures it. Just like the indigenous like Native Americans are dream catchers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. With uh, Latino culture, it, it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, I remember I, as a kid, I was like so fascinated with dream catchers. I remember I, like I like I like I got one as a gift from like my, my mom's friends, and then um, I forgot someone like I told someone at school and like they're like a really Catholic family. They yelled at me like, "You need to take that down. You got the devil's magic in your house." I was yeah, like, I was like, "It's just a dream catcher. Like, what, what could possibly go wrong?" Yeah. And as I got older, I looked in on it, and I was like, well, "You know, a lot of Christians aren't gonna believe into it." Yeah. But it, I didn't have any nightmares, you know, until like it finally like all the feathers fell off after like it just being up for so many years. Yeah. So I was like, then after that, I kind of like got rid of it. Then I was like, "Oh shit." You never know. Dream, you dream. Yeah, you never know, dude. Yeah. We all never can know. It's a strange world we're living in. Man. It is. It is. Back to punk rock, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, we're just going on <laughs> so many tangents. Side tangent, huh? And thank you. Uh, those ladies and gentlemen, Rick Creeper's behind all this. He's a sound, he's a sound tech and the camera guy for today. Uh, be sure to follow him at Dark, Arts, or Dark Alley Productions, excuse me, and Rick Creeper 11. Um, he's, he's also, like I said, I keep telling everyone, you're like in a, a human encyclopedia. <laughs> you know what I mean? If there was a degree in bullshitology, I would have a double, double masters. Double master. That's, Real question: Have either one of you heard of uh, uh, the Battle of Los Angeles? Oh yeah, the, the with the the air the weather balloon or whatever the hell. Yeah. No, I never. Heard. Oh shit. Okay. Well, here you go, man. Let's let's drop some knowledge. So, <laughs> um, basically, it was like what, like in nineteen twenty two or like it was it was it was in like it was post World War Two. Oh, then I'm like way off. Um, <laughs> it was a um, automated uh. Rampart like turrets, mm-hmm. like machine gun nests, in uh, I think the port of Los Angeles, right around um, Santa Monica, what do you mean? I think San Pedro. Oh, San Pedro, I'm sorry. Yeah. Around, the, around the coast, either San Pedro or Santa Monica, yeah. and they were automated turrets. And they were posted, they're, they're, they worked on motion. Mm-hmm. So what it was, there's was, there was file of footage of uh, them shooting off the guns off in the air, and the spotlights 
are picking up some type of image in the air, and they're blasting at this thing. They're blasting black and white footage. Mm -hmm. Later on, the government came out and said, oh, it was a weather balloon. Uh, yeah. So okay. these automated turrets picked up some type of or some orbital, some object floating out there, yeah. and these automated turrets went off. So the rest of the soldiers that were stationed there started firing at this thing. Oh, damn. So the government came back, the U.S. government said, oh, it was, it was a weather balloon. But then a lot of people said, oh, it was a weather balloon. Why were we shooting right through it? Right. Yeah. So this thing was taking hits, but at the same time, a lot of the rounds were going passing right through it. If it was a weather balloon. It would have been down with one hit. That's it. would have been damaged. So there's all this whole speculation. It was a weather balloon. Mm -hmm. It was an alien aircraft. Mm -hmm. So that was the one time that um, that something actually happened on the on the West Coast that was captured on film that the government tried to debunk that it wasn't UFOs. So that's crazy. Yeah, that all yeah. the Angeles. So um, not 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 raging against the machine album. But yeah, that's yeah. What I was <laughs> the actual event. Yeah. But there's there's YouTube channels and they just yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I remember like the. I, forgot, I was watching this one YouTuber, Shane Donson, I think it was, and um, he was talking about it. And when I heard about it, I was like, it was crazy. Because, like, you always hear about like, these alien sightings going on, like, in Tennessee, like, you know, backcountry type of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, no one believes it. It's like, oh, it's just some hillbilly. No, maybe we should start believing them. Because it's like, because obviously it came down to our side. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, what are, are now are we a bunch of hillbillies? And I think the government thinks that we are. To say that, like, who's going to believe it was a weather balloon? Because, mm -hmm. like, I, I know I'm not the only one who's probably thinking that at the time, you know, I was like, or I'm pretty sure other people were, at the time were thinking the same thing too. It's like, yo, this is our military. We were supposed to be like the number one military in the world. You know, we fought Hitler, you know what I mean? Like, fuck. Yeah. You know, um, how come we can't take down a weather balloon though? You know what I mean? Like, if we can do all this stuff, but yet a weather balloon is able to get away from us, like, what, something's not right. Either it's bullshit or, I don't know, something, something's not right. So it's, that, makes that me think about it. Yeah, it makes me think about it a lot, man. And Project like, Blue Book. I've never heard of Project no, Blue Book. No, that's crazy. It was a government. Uh, they made a show about it recently. Or I think it was on Sci-Fi. But uh, yeah, this is the same thing. They were just doing cover-ups. Oh, mm -hmm. Same with um, cell phone technology. Oh, like yeah. Fiber optics, cell yeah. technology. Um, the technology that developed the internet. It mm -hmm. apparently was, um, it was tech that was extracted off an alien aircraft, which supposedly is an Area 51. Yeah. So all this modern technology that we supposedly have, um, the government's had since the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's stories that the government had access to the internet, but it was, it was private. You know, they didn't release it to the, to the public until like the 90s with AOL with dial-up. Yeah. But all, you know, cell phones, stealth technology, um, Kevlar for bulletproof vests. Yeah. yeah. All that is supposedly, it's alien UFO technology. Did they say that some like policeman's wife made that or something uh, like that? I mean, like, the, who knows? Yeah, who really, I'm not, I'm not like knocking your, your theory out, or the theory, I'm just saying like, it's crazy, like they thought that, like, I don't know, they just, I feel like they're like, some of the cover-ups, they're just like, ah, you know, we'll just tell them whatever, like the weather balloon and then now like, oh, Cavalier, yeah, some, some random lady just made that, you know what I mean? Like, not knocking down like, you know, the lady, she's probably a really smart person and everything like that, but it's all like, it's like, just out of nowhere, you develop a fucking, uh, uh, sorry folks, if you can hear that, we got some people who want to show off their automobiles <laughs> and motors and stuff like that. Um, it's like, like, just out of nowhere, you just came up with some thing that could stop a bullet. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's kind of crazy. crazy. Like, don't get me wrong, Velcro is a trip to me still. Yeah. <laughs> Kevlar, I feel like, yeah, that's like some like way beyond probably scientific shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy, yeah. There's an old movie that came out in the, I want to say early 70s called um, The Final Countdown. Uh -huh. And what it is, um, it's a destroyer, a modern a naval destroyer in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Jet planes, modern technology. And it goes through like this uh, ripple in time. And this, this modern destroyer ends up... Uh, Near Pearl Harbor during before World War II, before the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah, um, that's loosely based on the the Philadelphia experiment, mm -hmm. where uh, the government was tra uh, attempting stealth technology, also time travel. Yeah. So this this modern uh, destroyer ends up, you know, pre World War II, and they have an opportunity to stop the bombing of uh, of Pearl Harbor. Cool movie. And obviously, you know, at the end of the movie, they decide not to do. But, uh, yeah, a lot of this is based on like, a lot of government supposed experiments. There's a movie too called The Philadelphia Experiment where it's two naval, new two naval officers that end up in modern, the modern world, but it's in, in the 90s. But uh, mm -hmm. a lot of this is a lot of theories that people say the government's hid, so. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, who that's knows? crazy, yeah. Huh? 
Okay, so you never back to the punk rock. I'm sorry, dude. We want to talk about you. you <laughs> hey, know, I'm having good, a lot of fun. I like this conversation. This. Same here, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> um, let's get back to your stuff. So the music. You just came out with a new song called Addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an amazing song. I've listened to you. it a few times, and it's really beautiful. It really does tell a story of a man, you know, who's kind of broken down and, like, you know, who's dealing with his addictions and stuff, obviously. Yeah. But um, the way you wrote it, the way you sing it, too, it's just it really, like, uh, really touches you. You know what I mean? So it's a really, really like, good job on that. Thank you. Thank you. What, what kind of, like, inspires you? Like, you know, is it things that you've dealt with in your personal life, or um, is it, like... Just, uh, just how do how do you come up with the songs? Basically, is what I'm asking. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think a lot of it is personal. Uh, yeah. It's kind of my way of you know getting that that energy out of me, that dark energy. Okay. But I put those experiences into poetry. Then I put that poetry to music, and yeah, I'll come up with some simple guitar chords to kind of go along with it. But yeah, I, li- I like that storytelling aspect of, mm-hmm. and that kind of goes back to my like of uh, Americana music, folk music. They were great yeah. storytellers. But yeah, that song in particular is about a masochist who's you know addicted to addicted to pain mm-hmm. and that eventually kills him at the end that's crazy i feel like anyone with tattoos is kind of like a little masochistness yeah. inside of them because we keep going back to that you know what i mean yeah like you're you have tattoos i have tattoos rick creeper you have tattoos and it's like we all know what to expect we know it's gonna hurt but yet we still sit there for hours on end we like it like what's like the longest session you've done for like your tattoos i think on? probably this one this one i got my dad took me when I was about 15. 15 years <laughs> yeah. old. Like getting that. A, like, so all that was done in one session? Or? This, this, actually, this was two. This was two, oh, sessions. two sessions. But still, okay. it, it was like after... The so not only did you went once to a tattoo shop at 15, but you went twice <laughs> yeah. to a tattoo shop in 15. I think I was 15 or 16, but yeah, my dad took me. But That's my, crazy. My dad sleep down tattooed, but... Uh, Hell yeah, dude. That's amazing right there, dude. I, I, I was 20 when I got my little... Rocky Horror Heart. Yeah. That was only like two hours and stuff like that, but it was, it, it hurt like hell. Like, you know what I mean? Everyone's all like, oh man, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. Bullshit. It hurts. Like, yeah. You know, I tell everyone like, like you know, when I started getting more tattoos, a lot of my other friends that haven't got tattoos yet, they're like, ask like, oh, like how bad does it hurt? Like, does it really hurt? I'm like, hell yeah, it does. Don't yeah. let no one tell you otherwise. People watching the young audience, it's, it hurts. It hurts no matter where they do it. It's some you might be able to take it more than others, but don't let no one else tell you like, oh, it's not even that bad. It's, it's a fucking needle going inside of you, like at like a whatever motor speed it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy though. Fifteen years old, getting that piece. What were you thinking at the time? Like, were you like, oh my, like you're just too hy- hyped up, uh, excited, or were you nervous? Like, how was that? Yeah, no, I was excited because I mean, I mean, tattoos were they weren't really taboo in my family. Yeah. My dad is completely sleep down and stuff, and a lot of the dudes I would look up to or hang out with, they were all sleep down tattooed. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I was excited to get in there. I knew I wanted to get something. But yeah, I got my band, the Bad Luck Bandits, and it's kind of a little collage in tribute yeah. to the band. I see that, man. Yeah. But uh, I'm kind of surprised why I'm not sleep down, I think. It takes too much time. Yeah, it just it. takes time and stuff. And I'm and money, busy too. Schedule. Like, yeah. You know I mean? Especially if you got a good tattoo artist. Um, you know, the guy that me and my lady get done to, you know, we always want to make sure we have enough to pay him good. So, you know, yeah. you know like, dude, like, ever, like, like this piece took a year to finally it's finally done now yeah oh, that's cool um and it's but it took a whole year because i was like anytime i go over there to get him get a session done with him i wanted to pay him like a good amount of money because he's such an amazing artist yeah you know, uh, shout out to josh hernandez over at <clears throat> bigsby knowles tattoo on atlantic and long beach california i almost forgot where i was at dude. anyways but yeah i'm sorry so addiction a man who's a masochist, everything like that. You have a song about your daughter, which is a beautiful song. Yeah. Have kinda. you played it to her? You know, does, does she like? How does she like know that? Like, you know, you're always out there on the road and everything like that. Has she gone to? You, did she go to your shows too? Yeah, yeah. She's been coming to my shows for since she was small. Oh man, that's beautiful. Yeah, she'd come see me play. So I have two songs about her. I have one called Lola. Uh-huh. That's her name, Lola. Yeah. Um, then I have another one called In a Cigarette's Time, and that's kind of about an experience I went with her. I went through oh, really? some hard times with her and stuff, okay. but. Yeah, that one's gonna be kind of about the that time in my life, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah, she comes. Is she? I give her. I gave her, a, you know, several instruments to see what she was, you know, interested in anything. So she took a liking to uh, to singing. Oh really? Yeah, she likes singing. That's adorable. Right she's there. played drums. She's tried the guitar. She likes the keyboard, but she likes singing. So there we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, you think about writing a song with her one day, like. Um... Like a Brady Bunch family type you know, of band actually, and everything. <laughs> actually, we did do a duet. I think I put it on my Instagram probably about a year ago. Mm-hmm. But she likes Five Nights at Freddy's. 
So we, yeah, she did one of the songs. She sang one of the songs. I guess they do in the video game. Yeah. And I played the guitar to it. So. That's adorable. That was cool. It's a good feeling. Yeah. How old is she, if I may ask? She's ten. She'll be eleven. Oh, she's year. ten. Okay. Yeah. The picture looks like a lot younger. I'm thinking like a like a four year old or six year old. I'm thinking like six years old, Five Nights at Freddy. Like that's a brave kid right yeah. there. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's pretty dope right there. That's a, that's a crazy little. A trend that's going around for little kids. You know Five Nights I mean? at Freddy's, yeah. Five Bendy. Nights at Freddy's, yeah, all that stuff. I played it once and I was terrified. Yeah. yeah. Have you played it? Like, do you, do you like play with your daughter and stuff like that? Or not? You know, I'll watch her play it, uh-huh. or she watches people playing it on YouTube. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I'm yeah. Like, no, hey, no, why no. don't you just play the game? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, she yeah, even when she was small, when she was about five, six years old, I would, I was kind of a bad dad in that sense. I would expose her to scary movies, just okay, like hey man, you got you, know, you yeah. That was done to me. Not that my parents are bad, but yeah, <laughs> that's why I like all this stuff. That's that's good right there. And like you know, finding out that like your child is getting into like the same stuff as you, that's like pretty exciting. It's all like yeah. yes, you know, because there's always like that thing where it's like the kids are totally opposite from the parents. And everything. Like, I'm totally opposite from my parents, you know, growing up. Me and my brother were, like, way different from everything like that. And they see, like, all my parents as a kid, they would see all the stuff I was into. Like, I saw Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. I was into death metal for, like, a while. They're like, what the hell? Yeah. And stuff like that, you know. So it's pretty amazing to see that, like, you, like, you know, a branch, another branch, the apple doesn't really fall far from the tree in your family. You're, you're getting tattoos like your dad. You're playing music like your dad. Now your daughter's stepping into that same footsteps. That's pretty exciting right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's cool. I, I don't yeah. want to push it on her. She, she, yeah, likes, no, she likes to draw, but um, mm. yeah, at least I exposed it to her. If she likes it, cool. But if not, then yeah. I don't want to be one of those crazy sports dads. Like, hey, you're going to play yeah. You're gonna play uh, football or something, you know? There we go. You live under this house. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy right there, man. Definitely. So... So doing all the music and everything like that, and also mixing in with the art. Do you ever? Are you doing like your own like uh, like cover work and everything like that, like uh, album works? Yeah, like actually, I'm. Uh, speaking of which, I'm gonna be recording an album in September. Mm-hmm. In early September, I'm gonna be recording. I'm probably gonna do about 13 songs. Yeah. Um, Did it do it again? No. I don't oh, know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. I'll just like. We'll yeah, I'm sorry. You're already doing the album in September? Yeah, so in September I'm doing thir- uh, 13 songs. So for that, I'm kind of thinking of an album name. I want to do, I'm, probably, I'm gravitating towards uh, Black Tones. Okay. Um, but I want to draw a picture. I want to kind of mix a picture because I like photography a lot too. So maybe yeah. draw a picture on top of one of my photos. Okay. So yeah, I'm just kind of brainstorming with that. But it's going to be a fun project. Nice, man. Nice. And uh, we were talking about this earlier. You are in a band, but you do do a lot of solo work. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you prefer to do the solo work, or do you like being with like the loud band, <coughs> rock and roll type of feel, or what? Which one do you like most likely like doing the most? I mean, you know, I, I think I like both equally, but I think with the band that I'm in, the Bad Look Bandits, um, mm-hmm. we've been playing so long since I was 15. Yeah. So I think after that many years, I just got tired of hearing. I mean, it's super loud when we play. Of course. Yeah. You know, when you're singing, people have no idea what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just yelling, but. Now that I do the acoustic thing, it's it's cool. You know, people can listen to these songs because some of them are kind of deep to me. Um, yeah, people can hear the lyrics. I can kind of focus on sounding a little bit better, although I probably still sound like shit. Oh, no. You, you, <laughs> you know? have a really nice but, voice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. You continue. I'm sorry, man. But uh, but it's cool. It's good. It, it's, you feel very naked up there, mm-hmm. but I like that feeling of being nervous. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Let's do it, you know? You ever thought about doing stand-up, man? If you ever want to feel completely naked, oh, that's doing scary. stand-up comedy yeah. is terrifying. You yeah. have no guitar. All it is is just you and the microphone, and it's, like, the first time I did it, I was, like, deer in the headlights. I was, I was hyping it way too much. I took my lady with me the very first time, yeah. and as soon, I had my whole set list ready, and as soon as I shake the host's hand, to, when you announced me on, everything went out the door. Like, yeah. all my whole, my whole jokes was gone, and I was just there, like, like, I, I couldn't say anything. <laughs> I just stood quiet. I said, like, one joke, and then, um... That was it. I was just like, I just apologized to the whole crowd. I was like, I'm sorry. And then like, you know, you did bad whenever the host comes back on and just like, hey, you know, comedy's not that easy, guys. Let's give it up. It's like, yo, fuck you, dog. Don't, don't rub it in my face anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> hey, but that's cool, dude. I mean, the same yeah. thing happened to me, man. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like you've had some it's... like, you know, people like mostly with drunks, most likely, huh? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I still get nervous when I play after. I mean, I've been playing music for over 15 years, I think. Uh huh. So every, yeah, every, every, especially playing by myself, I'm nervous before I get up there. But yeah. once I get up there, something clicks, and I just, yeah, I feel like I feel safe, you know. Yeah. After a while, but. Go. 
Like, you've had, like, some hecklers, though? Like, people going, like, boo, like, you know, like, stuff like that? Or? You know, I think, well, maybe, well, I think probably more with, more with the band. Really? The people seem to just, when you're playing in a band at a bar, people just act like animals, dude, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they throw them beers at me. Uh, Is that a real, I've seen that, like, in a lot of movies, like, yeah. the Blues Brothers and stuff like that. They have, like, the chicken wire and all that stuff. Yeah. That's a real thing. They're just throwing bottles at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they throw that. I mean, it kind of makes us feel like clowns. Like, we're just like, weapons are being thrown at you. I'm, I'm sorry. This yeah. is... Damn. Have you been hit before or what? Yeah, they got my guitar. They, they smacked my guitar. And I got to play a, a Gretsch guitar for anyone who knows about guitars. But I'm like, damn. damn. Pretty, I don't it's know like who threw it. It just came from the crowd. Oh, damn. Damn. Is that like a pretty, like, expensive guitar or something? Yeah. They're, yeah. yeah, they're pricey, dude. The Gretsches. Beautiful guitars. But, yeah, thankfully the guitar's okay. But Okay. But, yeah. I mean, a lot of those shows, I mean, they were cool. They were they were punk rock in that sense. So you're just, you're in the crowd. Yeah. They're in your face. But I think playing these more, these acoustic shows, they, they can probably still get rowdy, but it's a different vibe. And yeah. I, I like that. You know, people want to hear like that, like, like that, song, the songs and everything like that. Yeah. Especially, I feel like with acoustic crowds, it's more, more poetry and everything like that. The songs really do mean something and you've proven point of that, you know, with all your songs and, you know, they're very heartwarming and touching and stuff like that. Um, so I'm pretty sure the crowd is different right there. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a nice change. Not so wild, which I do yeah. like the wild. You got to have that contrast. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. That's good. Like, you know, you get like both experience. You get the best of both worlds. You get like the nice mellow crowds that really want to just hear you, what you have to sing. Yeah. And then you get the people who are just want to party and you're supplying the party music. You yeah. know what I mean? That's really good right there. That's cool. Um, any time where it's like, yo, things just got like a little too rowdy. Obviously, you had beer bottles thrown, but like, you know, I've been a few backyard shows where I got raided and stuff like that. Anything yeah. like that happen to you? Yeah, we, we, we started playing backyard shows over oh, where yeah. we're from in Northeast LA. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there was this one show that we played where this dude got stabbed. He got stabbed in the front, and we're like, damn, this is it. You know, that, you that like was, just, I think that was our first show. Did you keep going, or you like, did you keep playing, or did you stop right then and there? No, we, I think we. Yeah, we had stopped for sure. Then the okay. cops came and stuff, and we were behind our equipment. We yeah, it was crazy. There was a big fight, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you, it was scary at the time. But you look back to those gigs, you're like, man, that was fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's something it to laugh at now. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> I mean, I hope the guy's okay. But yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, I saw a right. get stabbed at a at a backyard show, not too like literally walking distance from where my grandpa used to live. Yeah, and I remember that same night I went knocking to his knocking to his door just to say hi, and I went back to the show. When I went back to the show, I was looking for a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I doubt she's watching, but if for some odd reason she's watching, I'm not gonna give her name out. But <laughs> she stabbed someone accidentally because she was trying to stab someone else. Yeah, and and um, she fucking um, you know, the guy was trying to stop her, and like because like we were all were trying to hold her back, holding like you know people are trying to fight and they try to like hold each other back and stuff like that. Um, so like she pulled out, I don't know where she pulled out the knife from, but she had the knife, came out of somewhere and she started to kind of like swing in it. And then some dude tried grabbing her arm, like grabbing her arm, but ended up missing and was like, cop, damn, I was right here when it happened. His hand was right here. I was right here. And it was just, I saw it come out the other side. Oh shit. Yeah. And that shit was traumatizing. And <laughs> at least you guys were polite enough to stop. The band kept going. Yeah, like, like, you know all the metalheads are crazy, dude. Like I love them, but I, I'm just like, why? Yeah. What is it? Who are you, who are you trying to impress? It's like they were just kept on playing. They're like, yeah, like you know, Satan, <laughs> shit like that. Like no <laughs> ambulance, dog. Like you know, shit. Fuck. Uh, we left right after that. I, like I had to. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. Dude. That's <clears> crazy <throat> shit. The guy's okay though, because I saw him like a month later. Yeah. At another show with a bandage on his fucking hand, still like he was still healing from it. Still at it. He's yeah. a trooper, though. I remember like seeing him there, and I was like, "Hey, were you at this show in such and such city?" He was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Dude, I was like right next to you when that happened." He was like, "Yeah, dude." Like you know, I was like, "Fuck, no, dude." That's crazy, That's crazy man. Oh, good times, dude. But yeah, right. they they make good stories to tell. Of them. course, man. Of course. Um, do you ever think about like? Like, you know, when your daughter's, like, older and starts going to shows without you and stuff like that, like, fuck, what if, like, something crazy like that goes down? Are you going to, like, try to, like, prepare her for that? You know? I, I've thought about it. I mean, I've taken her to some gigs, too. Some yeah. gigs that, I, that I'm not playing, some punk rock shows. Yeah. Um, there's been a few Psycho Billy shows that I've taken her to. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just so she can see, like, she would, she was looking at the mosh pit. She had no idea what it was. Really? And she's like, Dad, are they fighting? Uh, I'm like, no, this is what you do. You yeah. Know? That's what that's we do when we, when we get when we release that uh, that energy, that anger. Exactly, man. So she's aware of it, and you know, I'll trust her when she goes out to the gigs. 
That's good. I'll probably be there with it. Yeah. Okay, that's good, yeah. Right there in the back, sneaking out. <laughs> as far as the art, going back to the art stuff and everything like that, you're going to be at Midsummer Scream this year. This yeah. is your first Midsummer Scream, or did you boot? Were you there last year? I think no, you were. I was in attendance last year. I just went. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay, but I this. I saw you post about it. I'm sorry, continue. Yeah, this year, I'm in my first year uh, yeah. vending there. So, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's like it's one of my favorite events. Um, but yeah, just to be there with all those other vendors, mm -hmm. just to be a part of the event, it's, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be crazy. Hell yeah, dude. They're, they're saying that like roughly about like, how many thousand, Rick? Did you hear about, have you heard about that? It's, it's, as far as attendance, I think it's 30,000 plus. 30,000. It's, it's gotten bigger every year, so it's becoming like the other big event, but it's more for, I'm gonna say Comic-Con. Yeah, it's yeah. becoming it's, yeah. it's, just, it's just as big as it's getting just as big as Comic Con. Yeah, heard on Halloween community. It Maybe. seems like it's that's yeah. the biggest um, horror convention now yeah. because I thought Monster Palooza was probably the biggest at one point, but now I think Midsummer Scream is taking over. I remember going being in high school hearing about Scare LA. Yeah, I thought that was the biggest, but, but ever it, since Midsummer Scream, I think they were the biggest only because they were the only ones. I, they're they're somehow Palooza. connected though, huh? Midsummer and uh, Scare LA. Mm -hmm. Um. I think some of the people that used to work for yeah. Scare LA now do Midsummer, but that's like some whole other stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, um, it's it's crazy though if you think about it. They're already having like the same amount of, of like uh, fame, I guess you can call it. Call it. No, you can call it fame. Like the same amount of like uh, people coming over, and this is only their fourth year. Really? It's only the fourth year? It's only their fourth year. And Comic Con's been around for like ever, right? It's been around since the 70s. Since the 70s, really? Mm -hmm. Damn. I was thinking like 90s or something. But damn, since the 70s. I think Scare LA's been around since the 80s, right? Or it's like, been around for a while, so they were always considered like the big convention because yeah. there was, you know, there, there was limitations. There was only a couple. Mm -hmm. Now when you think about the haunt and horror community, it's Trans World, which is like in the Midwest. Yeah, that's in and, Atlanta, dude. Yeah, and then yeah. there's um, Monster Palooza in April. And then there's Midsummer Scream. Mm -hmm. And after it's that, right up there, dude. And it's the haunt season, Halloween, so. Dude, that's crazy right there. You know, uh, shout out to Rick West, one of the main directors and the, like, the main guys for that. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, yeah, your very first year being at Midsummer Scream. You're like, I, I know you're really excited for it. You're gonna do good, man. Um, with all your stuff set up, thirty thousand people are gonna be looking at your shit. Man, man that's a lot of you people. You know what I mean? It. You're about <coughs> to like have a good like outcome for it man i can already tell for sure dude yeah you know um it's crazy though like if you think about it not too long ago all this horror stuff and everything like that it wasn't the norm it was subculture it was very subculture yeah. like you know and then now at least as far like the past few years like you know like that i've been a part of it and everything like that and i've started seeing more and more it's becoming more uh like normal now like you yeah. know a lot of people like i used to talk to in high school they didn't know about Not Scary Farm. They didn't really give two shits about it. But now it's like everyone's like, oh, I'm getting my season pass for this. I'm going to this, going to that. Yeah. And everyone's loving it. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, horror is like, you know, becoming more mainstream now. And it's it's a good thing because it helps out people like us. You know what I mean? It yeah. helps out all of us. You know, we're in this entertainment for the horror community. And um, this is also, this is very taboo though still because it's like not too long ago we were like, kind of considered like, you know, the metalheads, like, oh, you guys are devil worshippers. Yeah, the freaks. The huh? freaks, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, so now it's like, all right, we're, we're going okay now. And it also makes me curious, like, what's going to be next? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, what's cool. going to be like the next trend? I think one, one observation that I've made that I was kind of surprised to see is that some of these events, especially like Spook Show, that I, when yeah. I did it, a lot of uh, gangster-looking dudes, they right? attend these events, and I see them with their Michael Myers t-shirts and stuff. But I think it's cool. It's, it's cool seeing that because I think people are more encouraged to be themselves. Yeah. If you like these kind of things, it's okay to like them. You exactly. Know? You know what I mean? Like, if you, back then, like if you told someone you're into scary movies, they're like, oh, it's because you want to kill people. Yeah. Now it's all like, oh, shit, me too, dog. Like, you know? Yeah. That's, that's really crazy. I'm glad you brought that up, too, because I've, I've seen that before, like, at a last spook show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a good amount of them. You know what I mean? I was like, what up, guys? How you doing? So that's cool. I, I'm glad that people are more encouraged to be themselves. They have to be. Because I am yeah. I was a little embarrassed to admit at one point that I was super nerdy. I'm, I love Lord of the Rings. You really? Know, I love re I would prefer reading, drinking, you know, coffee and stuff. I would never but, take you for a Rings fan. Oh, yeah. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's, that's really dope. But, yeah, I mean, I, I feel okay saying those things now. That's that good. Man. Older and more comfortable with myself. Yeah, and, dude, yeah. you gotta be, man. You know, um, like, you know, this whole millennials thing, they kind of do, like, 
bring in some good stuff. And that's like to like let every, like to like encourage people, like you said, to be yourself. Yeah. If you're feeling like you know a weirdo, then that's a good thing. You know what I mean? You're still welcome to almost anywhere in life. You know, it's always a good, it's always a good thing, right there, man. Um, what else is there? So you plan on going to the? Mid you're of course you're gonna be there. Yeah, you have a booth there. It's a monster, yeah. yeah, Monster Palooza. So our son of Monster Palooza, the son of Monster Palooza. That's the next one, right? That's in September. That's in September. Yeah, son of Monster Palooza. I'll, I'm not vetting at that one, but I'll be uh, just attending. Okay. But in September, on September seventh, I'm going to be doing um, a Halloween themed art show, uh, the Halloween okay. movie. Uh, okay. It's over at some place in uh, South Pasadena called the Sugar Mint Gallery. There we go. That's yeah. All. Welcome to Haddonfield. Too. Yeah. Welcome to Haddonfield. So. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah Rose, the owner, she's put on. She puts on this event. I think this is the fifth one mm -hmm. that she's doing. So I'm going to be one of the artists at the uh, the gallery that she's doing. She just recently redid the the lawn in her backyard for her uh, movie screening nights. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't remember what they're showing this weekend, but last weekend they showed the Lost Boys. Yeah, the Lost Boys. Nice. Yeah, it's a really cool place. I went uh, a few weeks ago for an event they held called uh, Terror Market. Market. Yeah. I know we just missed. Yeah, each other. exactly. When you, yeah. when I was just leaving. You messaged me saying, like, yo, I'm here. And I'm like, oh, yeah. like, near home already. I'm like, fuck. When I, was in, I went to Burbank, actually. Me and my lady checked out the, the oh. Halloween store. Halloween Town. Yeah. Halloween Town, yeah. yeah. We checked out all that. That whole street that it's on. Dude, that's an awesome street. It's yeah. an, I, We were, like, like literally that same night, we started looking for apartments out there because yeah. it's such a beautiful area. They got, like, they got like you know, a comic book shop, like, really retro comic book shop. They have, like, all this rockabilly stuff, this... A whole clothing line for Betty Page stuff and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. My lady loves that shit. And um, yeah, Tim Burton grew up in Burbank. Really? Yeah, I did not know that. He's from Burbank. Yeah. I don't know why. That's I thought he was British. I yeah. Don't, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think that too before. Like, you know, because mostly like dark and spooky stuff. That's like British shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like in a good way. In a good way, guys. But um, yeah, it's just an amazing street, and I was really excited. Uh, CBD. That's another thing that used to be a taboo. Now it's like all natural and everything. They have a whole store just dedicated to CBD products. Yeah, and you see them everywhere now. Yeah, dude, like, we were talking about it uh, before this, and it's like, that stuff's like, I, I went to the doctors the other day, and I was telling them that I use CBD, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's fine. I thought they were going to tell me, to like, oh, you need to stop that hippie shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, even that, even like, even like fucking medical doctors are like, agreeing with this stuff, and it's amazing, but I remember back then, anything that had to do with weed, you were so close to going to jail for, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's, it's natural, man. Just uh, it's all natural. You don't get just don't abuse to it. it. You know? Of course not. Yeah, just like anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So that show, that Welcome to Haddonfield, that's yeah, gonna be that's gonna be cool. That's uh, the first time I'm doing this. Um, mm -hmm. Then I'll be at Son of Monster Palooza, just attending. Yeah. To go check it out. And then I just signed up. I just got accepted to uh, Comic Con LA. Shit, you did. Yeah. So there I'll be there. Go. That's in uh, October. Totally. Then I'm going back to the Sugar Mint Gallery in December. That's going to be a Harry Potter themed art show. So oh my god! That should be cool. That should be fun. Right? Hell yeah! Dude. Are you working Harry. on some new pieces right now for that? Or yeah. You... So I'm going to start the the Haddonfield piece. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to do the Harry Potter piece. Then yeah, yeah. That, it's going to be a busy year. I'm excited. Hell yeah, dude! And then on top of all the art stuff, I got some music stuff. And of course, you're going to be hitting the studio in September, like you just said. Yeah. Recording. That's going to be amazing. You got a busy schedule, and you work, and you're a father. Again, dude. Kudos to you. A kudos seems like an understatement. What's another word that's like props <laughs> to you? That's like a more extravagant. Because you deserve that shit. Because like, being you, a father, you. being a hard worker, full time worker. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, full time. Full time. Yeah, yeah full time. Full and um, and like doing art and music at the same time. It's like doing doing YouTube and fucking working part time has been kicking my ass. So I can't imagine the responsibilities of fatherhood and responsibilities of full time job. It's like oh god. Major props to you, man. That's a fucking, that's amazing stuff right there, dude. Thank you, brother. Yeah, um, it's we we live once, so we might as well exactly. do make most of the time. And I I like talking to older people and of get course. get their advice. And they always say the same thing: live a life you want to live, and uh, make sure you don't get to my age, as they're telling me, mm -hmm. and don't look back and regret not doing something. Exactly. Uh, Rick's like my my guru right here. He's been giving me a lot of good advice. Yeah. You know. Um, He's like only like a little bit older. You're like what, like uh, 20, 27, right? Yeah, no. It's, no, I, I act twenty seven, but I'm twenty seven, no. right? Yeah, no, well, I got some years on you, but um, this this dude is like the youngest, oldest man I've ever met. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's, like I'm, I'm surprised. Like I'm hoping I can have the same amount of energy as him because I'm already feeling it as, at twenty five. Like I got like pains in my back and my hands, all this stuff. So I'm like, fuck, I'm like worried of turning older. You know? So but, getting um, old ain't just for old people. Yeah, huh? dude, 
Cool. <laughs> man. Um, but that's cool, man. Yeah, that's. Yeah. You're gonna be busy, dog, and that's amazing. I thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. Dude. Yeah, of course. No, thank you for having you know, me, dude. And, um, uh, and thank you for doing what you do. Oh, no problem. You know, like, um, that's something I, I would. I would have loved to have been a YouTuber because I like telling stories and stuff. But I get nervous as well. I get nervous in the camera it's, sometimes. It's but nerve wracking. Yeah. And um, what helps is I. That's why I'm rambling. I'm sorry for rambling a lot. Same <laughs> with these. Uh, most of my fans, they know why I do this and I ramble a lot. But um, yeah, dude, it's. I still. I still recommend doing it. I recommend that I YouTube to everyone. Like, go for it. Dog. It's yeah. small channel. You know what I mean? Just go for it. If you got stories to tell, people want to listen. Yeah, you know? that exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've been appreciating your stories tonight with all like the punk rock stuff and your art stories and your upbringings and everything like that. All your conspiracy theories and everything like that. Which... Yeah, I love that stuff. Actually, speaking of stories, I'm gonna oh, yeah, I post uh, well, occasionally. I'll post I'll post uh, stories on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'll write them like short, scary stories. I'll write them, then I'll narrate them because I have a little recording uh, studio at home, a little poor man's recording studio. Nice. Then, uh, but yeah, I'm working on a few more. I'm putting out a little book. Hell yeah. Very similar to scary stories to tell in the dark, that kind of vibe. That's so I'm gonna really illustrate right some there. pictures. Hell yeah, yeah. And I got one on uh, YouTube actually. I don't know if anyone likes uh, creepy pastas, mm -hmm. but there's a narrator named uh, Otis Jiry that narrates some of these creepy pastas. But he narrated one of my stories called the statue. Really? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, nice. We'll have to uh, look that up. I'll put, a, um, I'll put a link in there in the descriptions. Uh, same thing with your Instagram, so people can follow your stories. Yeah. How often is that? Is it just like right when you come up with them, or uh, do you try to like do like a weekly schedule? Or like how is this? You know, with writing, I try to write write every week, but mm -hmm. I have a lot of stories that are incomplete. But yeah. I'm kind of finishing stuff now. Okay. A lot of them are kind of similar to H.P. Lovecraft, like cosmic horror stuff about the ocean. I there love that stuff, like the, the abyss. You know. What's <laughs> that phobia called? Where it's like you're scared of like like the underwater and stuff like that. It's something with the P. Like the P. Ah, oh, shoot, I don't know. But it is scary, man. Sometimes yeah. I'll go to uh, Malibu at night just yeah. to sit on the rocks. I'll take my guitar sometimes, and nice. I just look out at the ocean. It's pitch black. I just hear the, the noise of the ocean, oh, and it's, God, it's intense. And that's when I'll think of these stories and stuff. That's great, dude. Yeah. That's great, man. But anyways, let's get it wrapped up. Cool, cool. We, we appreciate your time again. Um, guys, follow Sam Ruiz on Instagram. All of his links are going to be in the description. Listen to his music. Hear all of his stories. If you're going to be going to Midsummer Scream, stop by his booth and um, have fun. And Sammy, just thank you again. Man. No, thank really you. Thank you okay. to the listeners. Thank you. Pleasure. 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 Thank you guys so much. All right. We're done.